take the other blank. Okay, my mother and I were drinking black coffee in our kitchen. So I'm just going to tell you what they are. You don't have to write them down, but just so again you can follow it out again in word you would do. So my mother and I, so mother is a character. You don't score yourself as a character separately, or whatever the character does. So you'd have your mother there, the actual scoring for a mother would be one uh, FMA. F because she's female, M because it stands for mother and an adult. We were drinking black coffee, so that would be an, an activity there, that would be a physical activity that you're doing. The drinking black coffee, so black would be a modifier, that would be a C uh, minus. Coffee would be food, so under objects it would be FO for food. Kitchen would be an object, so that would be uh, household uh, detail and so on. My father walked in and started to yell loudly at me. So now we got another character, my father. So father would be a one, M because he's male. F, that stands for father, and he's an adult. Uh, and he's yelling loudly at me. So that would be an aggression. So now we have an aggression from the father with an arrow going toward the dream. Now my mother angrily told him to quit, so now we've got another aggression. we got mother with an aggression going toward the father because she's angry at him. And now she puts her arm around the shoulder of the dreamer, so now that would be a friendly, with the mother being friendly toward the dreamer. There's body parts in there because we got the mother's arm, so under objects that would be a body part, that would be a B, a T for a torso part, and around my shoulder is another body torso and so forth. So, as I say, we're not going to go through all of it, but we could see what the aggressions are then. It's the father to the dreamer and the mother to the father. The friendly interactions is the uh, drinking coffee with the mother, and the other friendly one was when the mother puts her arm around the daughter. The one setting is they're indoors, and it's a familiar setting because it's our kitchen. So that would be an I for indoor, F for familiar. Uh, the four objects are the uh, coffee, the kitchen, uh, mother's arm, and the dreamer's shoulder. Two emotions is the mother is angry, and the mother was being friendly when she puts her arm gently around. There's five activities, the drinking coffee, uh, father walking in is an activity, yelling at the dreamer is an activity, the mother telling him is an activity, putting her arm around the dreamer is another activity. And the three modifiers were the black coffee and uh, that she put her arm gently around my shoulder and she loudly I'm sorry loudly loudly thank you I just started trying to train Bobby to do this and she is a natural kind she shouldn't have gotten trained so fast because now now there's a lot of work waiting for her. okay but can you see how you would go through and somebody else if we had worked together for a few minutes we would come out pretty much with a hundred percent agreement now, what can you do with that? What kinds of scores could you possibly get? And what, how would you apply it? Well, you could certainly look with this if you were looking at is there any difference on the basis of gender. So we could look at men versus women. And do they have any kind of different score? The answer is resoundingly yes. And on all these that we just went through, so if we went through on settings, women have more indoor settings than outdoor. Women have more familiar settings than unfamiliar settings. If we go through objects, women have more mention of clothing, more mention of household things, more mention of facial and hair details. Men have more cars and weapons. No big surprises here. I mean, they're just what we know are the general characteristics of those. So we see difference then in the settings. We see difference in the objects. 
we look at the characters women have more single characters men have more group characters now if we look at the gender as to who do they dream about so do men dream mostly about other about other men or do they dream about women how many think that men dream mostly about women no they dream about other men so that they dream about other men twice as often as they dream about women how about women who do they dream often more men or women it's about equal women are much more democratic they have about as many men as they do women in there. there's not a particular bias so why do we have more male characters it's predominantly I think because we have males are in position of power it's a male president it's a male uh, politician it's a male general it's males who until recently have had all the power and so males are important men still have to be aware of other men and all kinds of rivalry and business deals and political deals so men are still important for for them there after that I hope I don't get in trouble for this but after that women don't seem to be very important to men maybe their mother their sister and their girlfriend and the playboy bunny but outside of that women are not very important to men they don't they don't have a lot of control over the land. Has that changed at all? Like, it's been changing some, not, not nearly as much as you would think. I mean, the norms that were gotten, when we came out with our norms, was 1966. There's been norms down from Berkeley, there were norms out in uh, Richmond, Virginia, there were other ones in Salem, Virginia. There's a slight shift, but it's not nearly as much as you would think. So we feel like, you know, there's been many, many more shifts. You know, we have now a woman who is the candidate to be vice president and so forth. So it, it's shifting, but it isn't sinking in as much. Uh, yeah. I'm taking the back row. Uh, Whitney. Yeah, our norms were for college students. They were college students in Ohio. So we had norms on a thousand dreams, five hundred male, five hundred female, a hundred women each contributed five dreams, a hundred males each contributed five. But they were college students. But these it, it goes beyond that. It it it's an amazing sex consistency because if you look at other cultures it's also the same thing it's predominantly male character because again you go to other cultures and it's still the sheik it's still the, the tribal chief who has the positions of power and so what they do influences our life and so we still are living in reaction to what these male power figures are doing Marissa? I'm sorry well if you think it's like a sexist phenomenon or like some sort of like like well, it's the kind of thing we could get into a long discussion about, and I don't want to yeah. minimize it for fear of being communicating that it's not important. It's a real important one that we really need to kind of be addressing it because it's it's certainly been shifting. As I say, the idea of having women as presidential candidates, vice presidential candidates, secretary of state, and on and on are certainly having influences but and we certainly haven't had women getting equal pay for equal work and it, there's been a whole onslaught of all kinds of social injustices that were just gradually beginning to, to remedy on that but we need to be more aware of it because without having other kinds of consciousness raising activities we tend to fall into this well that's just the way it is Marissa? Um, do you feel that it also maybe matters a bit I'm like, sorry? As I say, do you think it also matters a bit who the personal, slightly more of a leader is in a person's family? Like, uh, sometimes, I don't know, I mean, most partnerships between parents will be fairly equal, but usually there'll be one parent who's slightly more of the leader. 
So like if a man's mother was more of the leader in her family, but all of these are going to shift. When I say these, I'm not saying that that's locked in in any way whatsoever. I'm saying we're talking a thousand dreams. If you talk a thousand dreams, it's it, it's going to be there. But there certainly can be all kinds of individual exceptions in it. And that's one of the things that's of interest to do with content analysis. What would be the exceptions? So I was just going through briefly saying these were the kind of gender differences. So if we move over we said that uh, gender, men dream about men more than they do women, women are more or less equal. If we look at aggressions, then men have slightly more aggressions than women. But what's interesting in the pattern is that males have a lot more physical aggression. Women have aggression, but it will be more verbal and gestural. Not, they don't usually stab you shoot you as much. So men have more physical aggression and they are much more likely to be the aggressor. Women are more likely to be the victim. So if we just plain take the number of dreams with aggression, it isn't markedly different between men and women, but it's markedly different when you look at how much of that is physical and who's doing what to whom. Then it's the guys and they're doing it to the women. And that's Again, the generalized uh, pattern. If it's friendly, it's pretty equal there. Men are about as often to be uh, friendly to women as women are to men. If we move over to sex, that's an area where there's been more change, I think, as a result of the sexual revolution. It used to be that if women had to turn in dreams with their names attached, they didn't have their many sex dreams. If they could turn them in anonymously, then they had a lot more sex dreams that they were willing to admit to. Uh, again, what goes on within those sexual dreams, for men, usually their partner is the equivalent of the playboy bunny, and it's quick. She's very interested, she's very ready, and it's quick. With women, it's almost always up until recently that they could identify the partner. He was somebody special. For the guys, she wasn't anybody special. She was just available and interested. For the women, it was him. Now, it could be the boyfriend, it could be somebody special, like Brad, Brad Pitt or somebody of that sort. But he wasn't just an anonymous punk. Now it's getting to be more beefcake for women as well. But it was more just, uh, somebody very special in their life. Uh, so we could go through, and on pretty much all of these, there's sexual differences. On there. So it shows that gender is important in terms of dreams and in terms of personality. Women and men have different kind of personality. Neither one is more valuable, equally valuable, equally needed, but men and women do have different values and they have different kinds of conceptions and different, different attitudes. So that's one way to do it. Then you could take a look at using the scales about other aspects of uh, women. For example, are there differences within the menstrual period? And so I have some material on that in the book. And the answer would be that there are shifts as the hormones shift. Women are different depending upon whether they're actually during menses or actually having a period now, whether they be getting close to ovulation, whether they be getting close to menstruation again, so that it's a PMS time. Those mood levels do influence uh, the dreams and what's going on. Uh, again, to make it with lots of individual exceptions,